Well, howdy, folks. It's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician here, making another video for you out of Boise, Idaho. Today, we are looking at a 2004-2005 Cadillac Escalade with a 6.0 liter engine in it. And this Cadillac needs a new water pump. As you can see, it's been leaking leaking all over the place and I guess it's been overheating all that other stuff so the owner brought it to me and uh, said hey I got a water pump leak so that's what we're gonna do I also noticed that the valve covers are leaking specifically the one on the passenger side you can see the oil seepage actually this is a leak because it's running down at this point it's pretty covered in oil so I'm also going to go ahead and change out the valve covers for them and I'll make a second video to show that. Now the water pump job on this rig is pretty straightforward. What I kind of like about it is that it has electronic fans. So I don't have to get in here and wrestle a big fan off of the front of this thing. Sometimes that can be real hard to do. You got to use a special fan clutch tool to get that off and sometimes they just don't want to come off and it can just add a lot of extra time to a job so some of the things you do need to look out for when you're changing the water pumps off of these uh, GM vehicles also Ford vehicles that have these water pumps like that is it has extra long bolts that mount the water pump to the engine block and if if it's been leaking for quite a while or if these bolts are degraded in any way like you see this one down here is just caked up and covered in junk um, it's very common for these bolts to break as you're uninstalling them so if you're getting ready to do this job don't just jump in it and try to get it done as fast as you can go ahead and take your time pulling and removing these bolts in hopes that none of them break because if they break you got to get into extracting broken bolts and stuff like that but the job itself is pretty straightforward you're going to remove your belts you're going to use a 15 millimeter wrench or socket or belt tool to go ahead and loosen the tensioner get this belt off and then while i'm in here i'm also going to go ahead and replace the ac belt because as you can see it's pretty cracked and and broken and stuff so so i'm going to go ahead and get started and i'll just uh pause it in between my work time and kind of give you a step-by-step -step instructional on how to do this all right so the first step that i did was to remove my upper radiator hose and i didn't fully remove it off of here i just removed it off of the water pump and went ahead and just got it out of the way just set it out of the way and i want to show you something here these some of these gm clips can be tricky let me see if i can get the camera to focus in here there we go if you notice there's a little clip here you've got to get yourself a little pick or a screwdriver and go in through here which is what I did here and kind of press that part back and then pry up at the same time that way you don't break it or anything like that just wrestle with it for a little bit and uh, it should come off all right so my next step will be to use a 15 millimeter socket and ratchet and go ahead and get my belt loose and out of the way all right, so now that I have the belt out of the way, the next step is going to be to remove the tensioner off of the water pump. And that's not just only gonna allow me to remove the water pump, but it's gonna give me the room that I need to get in here. So we'll get that out of the way. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and remove my idler pulley. Is it a have to? Eh, I don't know. You decide for yourself. I'm gonna do it for the sole purpose of just making sure that I have all the room that I need to work in here and get things done so I'm not having to work around stuff, you know, maybe breaking stuff and stuff like that. So we're going to go with the tensioner and the idler pulley next. All right, so as you can see here now, I've got my tensioner and idler pulley out of the way. I've opened up some room here so I can just get in here and work freely without having to wrestle or work around anything. And I've begun using my 10 millimeter socket to remove my thermostat. Need to get my heater hoses off of here. Then I need to start removing my water pump bolts. Now this is where you just need to take your time. Be careful. These little 10 millimeter bolts again tend to like to break and snap off. Especially if you've had a leak for a while. Or if you look down in here and you see that they're real corroded 
or anything like that and broken bolts and stuff like that that's no fun to take out so so yeah don't don't get in a big rush or anything quality quality is what i'm all about so here we go just going to go ahead and pull a bolt here there you go all right so i'm going to go ahead and get the thermostat removed get these heater hoses removed i'll show you what that looks like then from there we'll go ahead and start working on getting the water pump itself out all right now that i started removing water pump bolts i'm going to go ahead and show you why i've been real big in this video to tell you just take your time be careful because water pump bolts are known to break and this is why right here now i've got one bolt that came out of here and one bolt that came out of here and as you can see this bolt has a little bit of corrosion and it's obviously been leaking and there's been coolant that's been going into that bolt hole now if this goes if this happens long enough what can happen is these water pumps they'll leak but they won't leak out they'll just leak into the bolt hole they'll seep in here make this bolt wet you won't know that you have a leak for months on end until it finally starts leaking out and it compromises the gasket by then it's very possible that the bolt has been corroded enough so that when you try to torque it to remove it it goes ahead and it breaks and it normally breaks right in this area right here leaving you with half a bolt stuck in the hole so this bolt isn't that bad this leak was caught in enough time but still go ahead and take your time so what I'll do is I'll clean this bolt up go ahead and, re and reinstall it because it's not that bad but yeah there you go uh, that's what can happen and both GM and Ford are real well known for breaking water pump bolts when you have an issue with a leak and there you go there's there's another nasty bolt and as you can see it not only gets on the sleeve part here of the bolt but it'll get down into the threads and so just be careful again because you can tear up the threads and just add a lot of extra unnecessary stress to the job all right so now as you can see we got the water pump off i've even gone ahead and i've uninstalled the ac belt while i'm in here and i got all this open room might as well put a new ac belt on so one of the things i wanted to point out to you before we reinstall the water pump is you may have some leftover gasket in these areas let me see what i get there you go camera focus don't get too carried away with trying to scrape this off I've seen people use grinders and other stuff and try to scrape it off so it's perfectly beautiful and clean and all that other stuff. Don't worry about that. Just take a razor blade and get any excess gasket that you have off. If there's still some discoloration, like you see here on there, that's not a big deal. Uh, what you really want is you want to be able to run your finger over this and make sure it's nice and smooth and that there's no big oh what's the word i'm looking for lumps bumps anything like that no big chunks of gasket material left behind you just want to go around here make sure everything is nice and smooth and just go from there um so yeah that's about all that i have to say about that right there same same for this side just scrape off what you can don't get crazy with scraping it off. Run your finger around it and make sure it's nice and smooth. The gaskets, the new gaskets, will go ahead and fill up, fill in any issues you might think that are left behind. So yeah, don't get too carried away doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and get the water pump reinstalled and show you that. All right, before I get this water pump installed, I want to take a moment just again, kind of show you and teach you the difference between a good water pump and a bad water pump. Now when water pumps begin to go bad, the bearings and the pulley will begin to get loose and the pulley will spin freely. You notice how easy that pulley spins? When you compare that to a new water pump, you can see the water pump pulley stops by itself after about a full rotation. That's because the bearings are new and tight. Bearings in here are wore out and loose, so it just spins freely. So there you go. That's how you can always tell if a water pump isn't working correctly. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do this is simply pull the belt off, spin your water pump by hand, and just kind of feel how loose and how free it spins. All right, let's go ahead and get this water pump on. All right, and there you go. You got a beautiful new water pump on there. Now, 
the torque specifications on these bolts, if you look them up on the internet, you're going to find a few different answers. It's going to be anywhere between 10 to 13 foot-pounds. I go ahead and torque them down to about 11 foot-pounds. That is not a whole lot at all. So make sure your torque wrench is set to perfection because if not, upon installing and over-torquing these bolts, they are very easy to break and you've just caused a lot of extra stress to your job. So it's not a whole lot to torque these down. What I do is I actually run them in by hand and then I go ahead and I torque them down and tighten them up. All right, and we're basically done with the job. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, as you can see here, got a little bit of silicone on there. Because the thermostat housing came with a paper gasket, I went ahead and used a little silicone on that part right there, just a really thin film of uh, silicone on there, just to ensure that that's not gonna leak. Other than that, there's really nothing left to do, but put everything back in the order that it came off. Uh, including your hoses and your pulleys and stuff like that then go ahead and fill up your reservoir start it up turn the heater all the way to hot and put it on the the vents and go ahead and bleed it out um, you'll know that the system is bled out once your heater starts blowing hot again and you're no longer getting any air bubbles out there's no way to access the radiator so there's no radiator cap this is where you're going to fill it up at so yeah just go ahead and open this up leave it off fill it up and once your heater starts to blow hot after you fill it up with coolant then you can go ahead and reinstall your cap and it will continue to bleed itself out on its own after that so well there you go folks if you have any questions or comments just uh shoot them to me in the comments down there uh, i'm real good at getting back to people and trading emails and stuff and helping you out with your projects helping you save some money and all that other good stuff I really appreciate everybody that watches my videos and supports me. This is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. I am signing off.